Hi, who remembers these? The iMega Zip Disk, all 100 megabytes of storage, which back in the day was pretty good considering the Amiga floppy disk was only capable of holding 880k for the uh, double density disk. So these disks could store around about 130 Amiga floppy disks, so they were a great storage medium at the time. And um, there's the, we open it up and we get the disc out here. Uh, basically it's just a, a big floppy disc really. Um, and uh, you may have seen my other videos where I assembled my Amiga 3000 from the ground up and installed an operating system, hard drive, CD-ROM drive, etc. And uh, while I was doing that, I um, I was using uh, this IDE adapter here. It's a Buddha IDE adapter with two ports, zero and one. And um, the hard drive here is attached to port zero as a master on the on the first connector of the ribbon cable. It comes from here. That's that darker cable there. And then after that, I've plugged in to the second connector on the same cable. CD-ROM drive. Uh, actually it's a DVD drive but it works well as a CD-ROM. Uh, so that's set to slave on the IDE cable. Now that left me with the spare cable here and I wondered what I was going to do with that and I uh, remembered that I had an old internal IDE zip drive. So I thought I'll just um, see what happens if I connect the cable. So I connected the data cable there and the power cable. It's got a disk in it at the moment. And I'll show you what I found. So with the zip drive attached to the Amiga 3000, and booted into Workbench 3.1 I inserted a disk and lo and behold it detected the disk um, so it works out of the box pretty much at least with the Buddha IDE adapter uh, I've already formatted this but I'll just show you the procedure for that I just did a uh, quick format so the device is DF5 I've named the uh, volume saves 96 megabytes capacity. So that's when I knew that I was detecting the correct disk. I'll take that off and we'll do a quick format here. And there we go. One formatted zip disk. Uh, I actually did a full format the first time I did it just to make sure it was working. It, did, it worked fine. So this is really good for a project that I'm doing where I'm uh, backing up as much media as I can relating to the Amiga, uh, such as this uh, SCSI hard drive. And that's more than likely that's probably out of a Amiga 2000. So I'm going through a big uh, pile of uh, hard drives. I've also got um, SciQuest. I've got these SciQuest uh, 44 megabyte uh, disks that I'm working on archiving. I'm having a little bit of trouble with the SciQuest drive. I'll do another video uh, related to that. Uh, I managed to get it going quite well and then all of a sudden stopped again. So I've uh, been trying to archive these off as well. I guess you could copy floppy disks over as well if you wanted to back up floppy disks and the data on them anyway. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'll quickly show you the, how I um, uh, do a backup. So I'll attach this um, SCSI drive to the SCSI connector on the Amiga and boot it up. Right, so I've booted the Amiga with the SCSI drive attached, the one that I want to back up. And you'll notice now that I've got a DH5. So that's full of uh, programs and data uh, so I would like to back that up so what I do is 
I've also on my ID hard drive I've got, I've got a drive called Work which I use to back up to. That's an ID, the actual ID hard drive that this machine's booting from. It's quite large, so uh, we've got 841 megabytes free out of um, it's about, about a gigabyte, just under. Uh, I'll put a drawer in here called Backups, and I'm backing up drives, so into just other drawers. So what I'll do is create another drawer here. Okay, so I've called it test 5 and we just run a shell command. So we just open a new shell and pretty much all I've been doing is just doing this command copy dh5 colon which is the uh, source disk space work so this is to the work disk to a drawer called backups and a drawer called chest 5 under that or oh, actually I don't think we need that space all and so what that's doing is just yeah obviously copying everything on DH5 across to that backup folder that I just created, test5. So while that's uh, chugging away in the background there, I can show you the zip disk. So this is a newly formatted zip disk, so pretty much just do the same thing really. Um, now remember the zip disk was df5 from memory so we can open up a new shell here and just do the same command really so this is really just so I can take um, I can have two copies of the uh, backups one on the IDE hard drive and one on a zip disk that I could take off site if I wanted to so copy df5 to uh, sorry, DH5 is our hard drive to DF5 in a folder called test5 space all grabs all the files now I think my other backup is still running it is it will sort of slow things down a bit but let's do this here and there we go, it's uh, backing up to the zip drive right there. You could use the zip drive in a similar way you can a floppy disk on the Amiga using cross DOS so that you can put the disks into a, a PC, format them as 720k on the PC and enable cross DOS on the Amiga and that way you can move files between your PC and your Amiga just by putting files onto the disk, either the floppy disk or the uh, zip drive and move them across to Amiga. It's quite a handy way of transferring files between the machines. Okay, well that's uh, copying away there. There's uh, another way that you can back up to using LHA. It's a compression utility a little bit similar to zip on the PC. Um, it used to be PK zip and DOS and WinZip and Windows. Uh, so effectively just compresses all the files on the well within the folder or the disk that you're actually uh, wanting to back up uh, compresses all those files into one file and writes it out to a destination so I'll make a new a new draw here it's called test LHA now you have to have LHA installed on the Amiga, it's just a matter of copying a file across. Uh, you can find the file on Aminet if you search LHA and there are very good um, YouTube videos around this as well. Um, so You can tell you've got it installed if you just type LHA you should get the help file. Okay. 
Uh, so the command is, if I want to back up um, the DH5, I find it easier just to go into the actual drive itself and want to back up. Okay, and I just type in LHA minus A E Z R X. That, that's just a bunch of switches to tell the uh, the LHA program to uh, basically retain all of the files properties effectively what that does. A means to archive and then we put in the destination so it'll be df5 colon test LHA and then you need to give it a file name so I'll just call it df5.lha easy as that so that'll just chug away compressing all those files on DH5 and writing them out to a file on um, the zip disk which is DF5 into that folder test LHA and the file name is DF5.lha easy as that and when you want to decompress it's really just a matter of um, simply that's still copying to the zip disk there. It's really just a matter of uh, this command here where you would go uh, you you would go probably easy just to go to where the disk where the LHA actually is, the compressed file. So in this case um, it would be df5 test LHA and that to do a DIR in there, it's probably still writing this file, so I won't go ahead and do this. But as an example, to extract that, X, I think it is, uh, and then the file name, which is dh5.lha, yeah, that will expand the files to that folder. You can direct it to another folder if you want to. I'm not sure exactly what the command line is for that one, I'd have to look that up. But um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, quick video there showing the iAmiga zip drive and disks and my backup project that I'm uh, working on at the moment to archive all these hard drives and different media that I've got and also the LHA compression utility. So yeah, thanks very much for watching.